morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you know, sometimes you can just say it. Before we get going, um, you know, it's been a tough week for the Setzer family with the passing of uh, Judy's grandson, Colby. But, uh, and they're having a service this afternoon, celebration of life. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with the family up there. And I, I don't want to be too graphic about this, but let me tell you something. God is working. And I think that I never really, I mean, we talk about peace and we talk about grace all the time. We talk about mercy all the time, right? When you're in the, when you're worshiping and you're in the house of the Lord, dude, those are the things. And forgiveness and sin, those are just like the text phrases, the words that describes what Christians go through and what God does for people. And I sat there in a room. As uh, somebody comes awake after an accident, realizes, and then they have to come to that realization that they're paralyzed from the neck down, that they can't breathe on their own, they can't eat on their own, and they're being told this that that it's it's irreversible, right? We can't turn it around. Only the intervention of the Lord can can make this thing happen. And then, <clears throat> for those who don't know, Colby Colby had an eye disease where he had lost the majority if not the, all of his vision he could see the the perimeter of just like imagine looking through something and everything's covered up but he could just see the perimeter around there so he couldn't even see but he found and then he uh, moved to a farm uh out there out in iron station and uh, that became his little piece of heaven he could see enough to cut a straight line he cut grass forever so he could even blind i can tell you right now blind he cut the straightest line i've ever seen in any yard straight and just perfectly and that's how he was. And then he's being told for the first time that you can't, uh, because that farm, he would get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and then he'd come in at dark at night because he couldn't watch TV, he couldn't look at his cell phone, he couldn't do these things. So he was limited with all that stuff. So the farm became a piece of heaven for him. And then as he's in that hospital room and being told for the first time, imagine somebody telling you something for the first time that's that devastating, catastrophic, where you go, uh, you know that you're not going to walk you're not going to eat you're going to be in a bed for the rest of your life and and then what happens is then all that unrest because now you have to digest all this information you have to digest this and then you become not at peace anymore you not and then so what happens is is uh, then you're very restless and um you know whenever you have a limited uh sense about you your other senses pick up big time all yeah. of a sudden if you can't see i tell you what you can hear he built race cars with his uh with his son uh, chandler and he, he could literally with the touch of his fingers he could never tell the difference between a two and a half millimeter and three millimeter so i mean within thousands of an inch in, in length of things you could feel like you would not believe he can feel and, and through and you'll see that people who are blind they touch people's faces so in their mind they know exactly what they look like so it's you kind of saw that happening. And then <clears throat> then became restless. And then he could hear what are the doctors saying. And then he sees shadows going by his window at night. And just unrest. What is that? Who is that? Where are, they, are they watching me? And, and it was all that unrest. And then in that time, praying with the family, being with the family, praying over Colby, praying with Colby. And then a, a gift was given when his brother-in-law came in there and started talking to Colby. So, um... You know, God puts things in our lives to give us clarity and give us the opportunity for God to speak. You're right. So the son-in-law comes in there in that room and uh, starts talking to Colby, talking about life. What does life look like? And then Colby asked the question, says, what do you think heaven's like? Mm. And they started talking about heaven. And as soon as, so now he's been, he's, this is three days later, he's been restless, he's been uh, you know, trapped in his body, and and they have to make decisions whether we do feeding tubes and trays to sort of sustain life or don't do that, and that means we're not going to sustain life. And then when they start talking about heaven, and then we talk about how beautiful heaven is, and being received by the Father, and being the right hand of God, all the visions and the beauties and the glory and the mansions, the things that we sing about and pray about and study about all the time. All of a sudden, that became that vision instead of by touch having vision. Through the Spirit, it gave him vision. 
And in that vision, what happens is all of a sudden this restlessness, you literally just restless, could not sleep up 24 hours a day for days and days on end. All of a sudden, as soon as that was done, he, he took his first nap. He laid down and rested. And he was never restless again. And the reason why I tell you this story is because we talk about the peace of God. We talked about in Romans chapter 5, we studied this last Wednesday night. In Romans chapter 5, it talks about peace and tribulation through faith. Peace and tribulation through faith. Yep. And, that, and to watch that take place, and that's exactly what took place, was peace through the tribulation, through the faith in the Father. And everything that he promises is so significant. Those are the, that is a miracle in itself, to, to see God working and have the opportunity to see God working. And you have to think to yourself, there are many times we know people who go through a death or a trial, and how can you take this child, or how can you take this young person, or why would someone become sick with whatever disease and everything else? We have to search in the meaning of what Christ wants us to hear. What do you need to receive from this? Because it's not necessarily about the person that it got afflicted with whatever That's right. it is. Well, it's about what the story is and what can you gain from this. And how do I change from this? And let me see your glory, God. And let me see you work. It's so important to maintain the faith, stay in prayer, congregate with Christians within a, uh, within a worship group like this that all believe in the Savior and the blood. And we believe in the resurrection. We believe how big God is. And not only believe in it, but to know it. Because in the Bible, is written many, many times, it talks about the knowledge of God. Knowledge says there are plenty of people that can quote Scripture from front to back. Plenty of them. But you've got to be able to apply that to your daily life. And it's only through, knowing, Amen, it's only through knowing and believing does God reveal how true He is. That he is not just a story in a book. God is real. And our faith has to maintain strong through our highs and lows in our lives. God's good. Amen. If you'll rise, if you'll rise turn your hymnals to page 101. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope you're excited about being here. It's good to see people getting back from vacation, and I'm glad about that. And I hope you enjoyed your time. And, and um, you know, vacation is needful for all of us, but uh, uh, it's good to be in the house of God. And uh, uh, so it's good to see everybody this morning. I hope you had a good week. Thank God for all the rain we've gotten. And it uh, looks like we've got some more coming. So. Uh, he knows what we need. Amen? Amen. I was thinking about that. Let's do, as we get ready to go to the Lord prayer in a minute, let's uh, continue to lift up um, the, the family yes, of, of, God, of Kobe God. Setzer and um, uh, that they would find uh, grace and, and strength in time of need. And certainly these are difficult and tragic times. We've, we've all been there. And, um, you know, I'm glad we got hope. Uh, yeah. Amen. And, amen. Um, I know I, I text. Corey, and I didn't know what to say. Corey is, is, is Kobe's sister, and, and I've known Corey most of, well, all of her life. I got her, she was just a little redheaded little girl. She had a crush on me, actually. I'd go over there, and she'd jump up, and, and my mom would even just get tickled. She said, I like him. And, uh, but she'd been cutting my hair uh, for a lot of years now, and I know what some of you are thinking, well, where's she cutting it? But uh, uh, I, I've just always uh, thought a lot of Corey, and you know, and I, and I just when I when I heard it, it my heart's been burdened all week, and um, and and I just texted her and told her I, I I know my words can't bring healing. I know that. Uh, you know, we can tell things we've learned from books and heard other people say, yeah. but that don't take that grief away. But I assured her that I was lifting her and the family up to the Lord from whence cometh our help. Yep. That's where we find comfort is from God. And um, so let's just continue to lift this family up. And Bradley and I was talking this morning, just just bless me, just instantaneously. And I was thinking this week, and, and I don't want to go deep into this, and it's just a, um, you know, hard times, but I don't, I guess most people know, and I don't think she minds me saying, but uh, how long has it been since Tyler's accident? Yeah, uh, he was in an accident and suffered the same trauma. And he's paralyzed from his. He can't do nothing for himself. His was a brain trauma. And he, he can hear, but he can't speak, can't communicate, or nothing. And um, you know, Darling made a decision to, to bring him home and, and care for him, and uh, so all these years. And and you know, he can't do anything for himself. And night and day. You know, she feeds him. She oh, gives him his medicine. She nebulizes him, and everything's on a schedule. And she got to turn him over and get him up and bathe him. And all these years, all these years that she's been doing that, he can't do nothing for myself. And um, you know, when I when I begin to think about that, I'm I'm thinking about my Lord. What a wonderful, Amen. wonderful Amen. illustration of what God does for us. Amen. God says, you can't take care of yourself, Larry, but I'll be there for you. <laughs> I have to, when you can't do for yourself, I love you. And I'm there, and I'm not going to leave you, and I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to I'm not going to be on vacation. You know, when Tyler wakes up at 2 and 3 o'clock, he's sitting sleepless nights. God is always there. And, and that's what Brad and I said. You know, he said, He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Even, even in times like this that we're facing in, in tragedy and heartache and heaviness. God says, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. That, that's our hope, our strength. I, I look back on my own life so many times when God could have just snuffed me oh, out. Lord. And many here, of you here that know, know my life, but I could have been gone many times, but, but God was always there. Yes. He's always there. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that this morning that He says, I'll never leave you. Don't forsake. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through this morning, Maybe everybody's just on the mountain, and I hope you are. But I promise you, God is there this morning. Yeah, He's there. He's our source. He's that power uh, that, that we sung about this morning, and, and He loves you this morning. So we, we want to um, keep this family uh, in our hearts and our minds today as, as they have a celebration of life, and, and, and many others. You know, this is something that just don't go away. We never get over the death and the loss of our loved ones. I have not I hadn't, but we can find comfort in the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So uh, as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer and remember these, do we have uh, any more spoken requests this morning? My friend, uh, we've been friends for 47 years. Never had a falling out, never had an argument. And she passed away and found her dead Friday morning. Let's pray for her two sons. 
And yes, amen, Lord. Bless this family as well. Anybody else today? I just uh, asked for prayer for uh, Joshua being up in the ER last night. Uh, with uh, it was, We thought it was something bigger, but it didn't. And he's got a scratch on his cornea and an infection and a secondary infection in his eye. Um, just scared us to death last night. So uh, just pray that you touch and heal that. And you guys, you guys, doctors, definitely want to pray for my dad. His name is Jack Mays. And pray for him. He's got lung cancer mm -hmm. and they have to do uh, surgery and we'll be part of his lung uh, the later this month. So oh, uh, hey, he's a believer. Hey, he's a believer. Hey, Amen. Right. Wonderful. He's been having his cancer. Praise hey, you. Hey, man. Just he tells hey, everybody how God good is. Because I tell you right now, when you're going through something, you're still acknowledging how good God is and you're still sharing the gospel. That is hey, Amen. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, Amen. I appreciate the prayers. Uh, Boy, it's good to be back here. Amen. Amen. God. But uh, we had a wonderful vacation. God looked after us and met some fine uh, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and had a wonderful fellowship down there. And it was a, it, it was a, a, a great vacation. So, miss you guys. Amen. We but, miss you guys. Glad to be back. Amen. But thank God for His grace and His mercy. Yes. Amen. 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 I love the y'all heard this in a zillion times, but I'm going to say one more time. I love the praying church. I love this church. Amen. And your prayers. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else this morning? I know there's many. Let's continue to our, our nation and, and our country and our, our, um, our, our government. And um, uh, I'll get in a little bit, but you know, I don't know how many people are following. I'm not preaching politics this morning, but something that I've noticed, and I don't know if you have either. Um, you know, ever since the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, there's something different about him. I mean, and I say that to say this, you know, sometimes things in our life take place for reasons. We don't might understand it then, but, but you know, whatever, whatever, he, this has been a, a life-changing event for him, and, and he admittedly said himself. I, I never took so much um, honor in, in hearing somebody say something. I said it last week, but I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, after after it was all over with, um, you know, he didn't stand up and, and and praise, and he did eventually, but he, the, the Secret Service or the police or anything like that, his first statement released was, God, it was God that saved me and God alone. That's it. And man, I, I that that just that just says volumes. Yeah. So let, let's pray for our nation, pray for our country, pray for our leaders. Pray, pray for another. Look around, people that's not here. Pray for them. I know uh, we've all got people to pray for. Any unspoken request this morning? The Lord knows all about. It. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord. Pray, Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you for another privilege of being here this morning. God, we just thank you for your wonderful Spirit. That Lord, I feel right now in my heart, my soul, God. Amen. Lord, as this past week, God, we was all, uh, Lord, met with um, um, grief and uh, diversity and, and, and tragedy, God, and our hearts were heavy, God. Lord, we begin to turn to You, uh, Lord, as we always do, God, our source, our help uh, in time of need. And, and God, uh, I thank You for that, Lord. And, and Lord, even though my heart is still heavy this morning, God, I feel Your presence here this morning, God. Lord, I feel you working in my heart, God, lifting up uh, our soul and our spirit this morning, God. Lord, we just come to you and magnify your name, Father. And uh, Lord, we lift you up and exalt you above all things, Amen. Father. And realize that you are God and beside you there is none other. And Father, we come to you this morning lifting up your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we're told in the Word that if we lift Him up, that You'd draw all men right. to Him, God, and, and to us, Lord. I pray this morning, God, as we lift Him up, God, that You begin to draw people to You, Father, and, and to that cross, God, where they'll find help in time of need, Father. And, and God, we just thank You so much for all that You've done for us this yes. morning, God. Lord, how that You've uh, answered our prayers, God, how You've healed us, how You've kept us, God, and and Lord, as, as, as Bradley and I was talking this morning, God, even, Lord, when we, we weren't saved, God, even when we were out in the world, right. God, Lord, you had your protecting hand upon us. And, 
And God, we thank you for that this morning, Father. Lord, your love, uh, Lord, is, is, is uh, more than we can comprehend, God. Yeah. Lord, it, it's more than the mind and human can fathom, God. Lord, it's a love, God, that, uh, that only you can give, an agape love, God. Uh, Lord, we thank you for that love this morning, God. Unconditional love, yeah. God. Lord, you don't look on us and say, well, he deserves my love and he don't or she deserves it and she don't. God, the Bible tells us that you loved us unconditionally. God, you proved that. God, you just didn't say it, God, but you said for God so loved humanity that he did something for them. He gave something for them, God. Lord, to say we love without giving, God. Lord, it's as shallow as, as a, a creek in, in a drought, God. But Lord, you said that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Father. Lord, we thank You for that gift of Jesus Christ, God. Lord, who loved us and gave Himself for us, Father. Uh, we pray, God, this morning, Father, as we begin to worship You, God, that we experience that love, that You baptize us in that love this morning, God. We thank You for the experience of being here this morning, God, assembled together in Your house, God, with God's people. So, Father, we're asking, Lord, before we get into our request this morning, God, that You just open up the windows of heaven, God, and begin to pour Your Spirit out on this place. Lord, let it begin to fill our cups and let our cups run over. And let us drink from our saucer this oh, morning. Yes. Father, we pray, Lord, for the, uh, the, the Klein family this oh, morning, God. God. And Lord, for the loss of this oh, loved one, God. And, and Lord, at such a, a, a young age, God, Lord, we pray that you just lift them up. Oh, and yes. Father, comfort their hearts as only you can do, Father. And Lord, let us find peace and grace in this time of need, Father. Yes. But God, most of all, let us look unto you this morning, God. Lord, that's where our true joy and our true peace and our, our true uh, happiness comes from this morning. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He said, I, behold, I give you peace, not as the world gives, but my peace I give unto you, Father. I pray that peace, Lord, just fill the depths of their hearts today, God. Lord, as they gather together, God, I pray that you just bring them together in unity, God. Lord, let your spirit just run, Lord, through them this morning, God. And Father, realize just how good and how merciful and how great you are. God, I pray this morning that we all just take a, a deep look, God, and understand that this morning. Father, the thought came to me, uh, Lord, this past week, Father, uh, that death, Lord, it sets no days, but death makes an appointment, God. It's appointed unto all of us to die, uh, Lord. And then after this is the judgment. God, help us this morning, Father. Lord, just search us all, Lord. Let us know that we know that we're ready when that day comes, God, because we don't know, Father. And Lord, the only thing that we can do is prepare uh, when it comes, God. So Lord, I pray that you just touch each and every one here this morning. Father Debbie's friend that passed away, God, touch man. that family. God, lift them up for all the bereaved this morning, God. Lord, we pray that you just comfort their heavy and burdened hearts, God. Lord, you said you came to heal the brokenhearted, God. And, and God, we pray that you just touch them in a mighty way, God. Lord, and just let them find peace in this time of grief, Father. Now, Lord, we pray, Lord, for all the ones that sick this morning, God. And we pray for uh, Joshua, God, that you just touch him in a mighty way, God. Lord, just quickening him right now, Father. Lord, let the healing power of God just begin to flow through him, God. And touch that eye, God. Lord, we still believe in miracles, God. Lord, sometimes we look at the physical miracles, God. And Lord, we know you're still capable of raising the dead, God. And bringing sight to the blind. And, and God, we, we know that you can make the lame to walk again. We know that you can heal cancers, God. Lord, we, we heard testimony and we've seen the very witness of it here in this church, God, Lord, uh, that you answer prayer, God. Sometimes we still overlook the greatest miracle of all is God to take that soul that's on its way to hell and destruction, God, 
and Lord call it out and God change their life forever God and set them upon the rock and establish their going. God that's the greatest miracle Father uh, Lord and we, we need that today God that people would be saved Father Lord as Christians we ought to be burdened for the condition and the souls of man God Lord we pray Father Lord that you just touch that heart God give us a burden to pray for the lost God don't let us get complacent in a sinful world Father Lord when, when old Noah sent out that raven and that dove the raven symbolized natural man the raven didn't come back he was complacent he was comfortable in a world of death and filth and sin and ungodliness but the old dove it came back representing the pureness and the holiness and the righteousness of God and it wouldn't lodge in a tree until the world and the earth was replenished and livable and clean God of its filth and its death and its sin. God help us to have the spirit of the new man this morning God. Lord we've gotten too comfortable in the world the old devil's pulled out every trick in his bag God and, and Lord he's deceiving and, and God we've got comfortable and God we, we love the things of the world more than the things of God Father Lord give us a desire and a burden Lord to love the things of God to go back to our first love as the church of Ephesus God had left it God and Lord we pray God that you just rekindle that fire that's in us restore that power God, that you sent the Holy Ghost to bring to the church, God. And Lord, just, uh, Father, surge through us that we'd see the mighty works of God. Lord, we don't want to, uh, we're not praying this for ourselves. We're, Jesus prayed, Lord, and when he rose Lazarus from the dead, he said, Father, I pray not for me, but for those around me, God. Lord, we believe, we, we want to see that power manifested through us that the lost would see the power of God and come to know Jesus Christ this morning, Father. Lord, that's the greatest need we have this morning is, Lord, to, to win the lost to Christ in these last days. So, Father, I pray, God, as we go forward this morning, we pray for our government, our nation, and our country. God, we pray for Donald Trump. God, this great declaration that he made and, and realize, God, Lord, that you just touch his heart in a mighty, mighty way, God. Lord, let him continue to protect the, the values of the yes. Word of God and the yes, people Lord. of God, Father. And Lord, oppose everything that's wrong. And, and God, we, we, we don't know, Lord, uh, what the future holds. So God, we pray, Lord, that you direct us, Lord, as we go in uh, to this election year, God. Lord, what I feel in my spirit might be one of the most important in our lifetime, God. Lord, we know that we're living in the last yeah. days. Lord, we know the Bible is being fulfilled. We know that Jesus is coming back. Lord, we know that we need to be ready. But Lord, we, we also know that there's a lot of people that's not ready, God. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you just give us another opportunity, Father. Lord, to enter into that realm and that, 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 that walk of grace with Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late, God. Lord, we pray this morning that you just endue us with power. Lord, anoint my lips this morning, God, not that I'd be heard, Lord, but that the Word would be proclaimed and the Word would be preached. And, and God, I pray I don't want to be seen this morning, God, but I want them to see the manifestation and the power of the Holy Ghost go through this place this morning, God. Lord, we know that you're hearing us. We know that you'll answer us this morning. We know that you're still able, God. So, Lord, just prepare us to receive it this morning. Give us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, God, this morning. You said we shall be filled. God, we can all leave here this morning, Lord, with the victory. We can all leave here this morning endued with power from on high. We can all leave here this morning, Lord, a little bit closer to you. We can all leave here this morning, God. Lord, saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We can all leave here this morning with the power of God upon our lives, God. Lord, that might change somebody else, Father, and want them to know more about what we know about God this morning, Father. So, Lord, we pray that you just empower us to witness, God. Lord, 
You only called us to do one thing, God. Lord, you commanded the disciples to do one thing. And he said, go into all the world and be ye witnesses of me. So God, help us to do that, Lord. We thank you for the variation here this morning, God. And Lord, we're all going to leave here in just a little bit. We're going to go to our homes and to different workplaces. But God, I believe that was your plan, God. Lord, if we'd all gather together, God, and never go out, Lord, what would be the hope of the world, God? But Lord, let the church, we're still the salt of the earth. We're still the light of the world, God. God. And Lord, even though that light might uh, be getting a little bit dim right now, God, Lord, we know that you can rekindle that fire and let us burn bright this morning. So Father, we pray that you just bless the singing, Lord. Bless everything that's said and done here this morning. Lord, let us open up our hearts to be receptive this morning. Lord, right now, let us put everything out of our minds and out of our hearts, God. And Lord, let us turn them towards you this morning. And Lord, desire to hear from you. And we'll thank you and we'll praise yes, you and we'll give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Lord, we love you. What an honor and a pleasure and a thrill to be back in your house Praise today, God. Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that your will would be done today uh, in the rest of this service, God. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us last week, God. I thank you for your protection. God, your blessings that you just overwhelmed us with, God. Uh, Lord, some folk may say, I don't know of uh, blessings or miracles, God, but we... If we stop for a minute and look, we'll find blessing after blessing. Thank you for them, Lord. God, you've been so good to us, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just can't get over the fact, God, of your love as the preacher was praying this morning on how you gave your son, God. Uh, just because you loved us, because, uh, God, you give us an opportunity, Lord, that we can live with you forever. What, what love, God, I, it's almost overwhelming, Lord. Thank you, God, for uh, being so good. Thank you, God, for who you are and what you do, God. Lord, I pray again, God, for uh, these prayer requests, God. I pray for uh, Miss Debbie's friend, God, that, uh, Lord, you'd help her with it. Uh, God, that you'd help that family with it, Lord. I pray, God, uh, Lord, that you would just put your loving arms around that whole family and use that death, God, uh, for good, God. You, uh, Lord, I think I pray again, God, for Brother David's dad. God, what a wonderful testament, God, uh, to tell people he's a winner either way. God, if you could just get that in our hearts, uh, God, we've already won the victory, God, and that's because of your son. So thank you, God, for that. I pray, God, that you touch his body. Uh, Lord, I pray for Joshua, God, touch his eye, God. Uh, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are a healing God. Uh, Lord, you said it in your word by your stripes that we're healed, God. Thank God for that for the scripture, God. Uh, Lord, if that wasn't in there, what would we do, God? And so thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, God, just to be able to come to the throne of grace, uh, God, and just Fill out our hearts, God, and you lean forward and listen to our prayer, God, even though you know, uh, Lord, uh, what we're, we're going to say, and you know what we need, God, uh, Lord, but you but you want to hear it from us, God, and I'm asking you, Lord, and I'm begging you, please, have your will and your way over all these uh, tribulations that these folks are going on. God, it, it could be that we'll, uh, we could be in the same boat in our next breath or in our next step, God. So not help us not just uh, to say it with words, God, but help us to understand it and know that that's true, God. God, I pray for this church. God, I love this church. Thank God that you sent me to this church. I can't get over it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you for this pastor. Thank you for these uh, faithful members that come to this church, uh, God. I pray, God, you'd use our preacher this morning. Uh, God, use him like you've never used him before. I pray, God, a supernatural uh, Holy Ghost would come down and fill him, God. And God, and fill our hearts, God, and revive us and give us a revival, God. God, that's what we need in these times and these days. I pray for again for our country, God. We are so far behind, God. Yes, God. Uh, but Lord, as long as you're on the throne, there's hope. And God, I pray, uh, Lord, your will be done with this election coming up, God. Lord, uh, God, help us not to take our eyes off of you and put it on men. Uh, God, that help us to stay focused, God, on you and you alone, Lord. Thank you again for the opportunity uh, for our prayer. I uh, thank you for the opportunity, Lord, uh, to be able to still come and worship you in freedom, God. I pray, God, that you'd watch over all of our uh, uh, military, God, keep them safe. I pray, God, that you'd bless this offering today, God. I, uh, most of all, I pray, God, that you would have a grin on your face, God, when we when we get done today, Lord, as we worship you in spirit and truth, God. Lord, our hearts just want to please you, God, and keep it that way. That's like a preacher talked about a while ago. Give us a desire, uh, God, a, a burning deep down in our bones, God. Uh, that we know that these are in the last days, God, and that we've got to get to folks, God, before it's eternal too late. 
God, I pray that stays on our mind 24-7, God. Help us to cross paths with lost folk. God, help us to, uh, Lord, to uh, stand up and not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, God. I pray, God, that, uh, for Brother Chris, God, that as, as he goes uh, today, God, that your will be done in his life, God. I pray, God, that you continue to strengthen him, Lord. Strengthen this church, God, I pray. And we'll thank you. We love you, Lord. You've been so good to us, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And they will rise to God, page 37. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Got your Bibles? Turn with me to Acts chapter 17. Y'all go there and stay there, and I'll get there. I got a couple more I want to read. I'm going to follow up on last week's sermon. But um, if you think preaching's easy, y'all to try it sometime. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Amen. You're right. Even with the call. Yeah. And there's no doubt that God has called me to preach. The devil will put doubt and fear in your mind a lot You're of times. Exactly right. uh, even with the calling and the anointing, it don't, it's not always easy. You sit there and you're just searching the Spirit and you're getting these thoughts and you're, you're, you, know, you hear somebody say something or the music or, uh, and then you know, the Spirit speaks to yeah. you and you're, you're constantly searching for for something, right? Not not me, but for through the word, and and it, it gets difficult sometimes. You know, by the time you get up there and say, "Well, Lord, I don't even know what you want me to do now." Yeah. And uh, but I was thinking about that song, "Standing on the Promises of God." I, I, I was talking to a young man some years ago that was a, a, an acclaimed atheist, and I, I don't believe there's no perfect no. Claim atheist. They they just right. block their mind. Yeah. Uh, and if you talk to them long enough and and, and right enough, they'll that'll come out. Uh, but they refuse to believe in God and um, talk about standing on the promises and and you know and, and one of the comments I made was I I believe the promises of God and you know well, I don't believe in God blah 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 and all this and he got his theory and his explanation and. You know, it just amazes me, though, that when I ask them, where's their evidence? You, you give me evidence that there is no God, and I'll show you evidence that there is a God, right. and they can't never produce anything. Right. The only thing they say is science. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 but, but it occurred to me, and I'll get this point when we get to the message, you believe in God whether you believe it or not. That's right. Even as I claim the promises of God, you're claiming the promises of God and you don't even know it. That's right. Well, what's that? Because the Bible says that whosoever believeth not yes. on the only begotten Son That's right. shall perish. Church. You're claiming that promise. Yep. Because you choose not to believe, right. you're claiming the very Word of God. And church, this book just sitting for the believers, there's a lot of promises made to the unbelievers. That's right. That's right. If they die in their sin, the Bible tells us they'll go, go to hell. That's right. That's a promise to the unbeliever. But to those that believe, we're going to enter into eternal joy. We're going to enter into the presence of the Lord. We're going to have eternal life. That's a promise to us. Yep. And that's something that we ought to take very serious this yes, morning. Yes, yes, yes. Is it, you know standing? Are we truly standing on the promises of God, or are we are we just taking the promise of God and just picking and choosing what we want to believe? God's word is real. God's word is steadfast. God's word is true, and it was given to us to help us this morning. Right. And and so you know, think about that. Just that amazes me. Standing on the, I remember, um, I can't remember his name, but somebody walked in, and I, that was way before my time. But they walked into his house, and and I may have told you this. He fasted so much that the doctors told him that he, he messed his stomach up. And um, they walked into his house one day back then, you know, you just, I remember that at my mom Pearl's house, you just walked through it in a door. It wasn't locked, it wasn't a screen door, you opened, you just walked in. Yeah. And so they, they walked in his house, and there was standing on top of his Bible, and he said, Brother, what in the world are you doing? He said, I'm standing on the promises of God. Praise God. <laughs> uh huh? Standing on the promise of God. All right, I'm going to go back. John, I'm going to read a, a couple verses from John. Uh, I talked about last week, and for those who want here, I'll catch up real quick, um, the, the, the power of God. And, and I, how I read, you know, I told you there was a survey taken some years ago, and they asked church members, uh, I, I asked you a question, why does the church exist? Think about that. 
Why do we, and I hope if you're here last week, you thought about that. Why does the church exist? If somebody asked you, why does the church exist, what would you tell them? And so there was a survey taken, and, and uh, 89% of church members now said uh, the church exists to take care of my needs and my family and, and so on and so forth. And, and only 11% said uh, the church exists uh, to, to take the gospel into all the world, right? And then it was asked to uh, the same amount of preachers, and it was the exact opposite. Uh, 89% or 90% of the preachers said it was to take, the church exists to take the gospel into all the world. And, and only a few of them said it was uh, uh, 11% or 10% of the pastors said it was to meet the needs of the, the people or the local church. That's pretty astonishing because when, you, when I read that, I'm thinking, wow, that, that, really, that really hit home because that's basically what, I believe that's the way people think today. But I think the, 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 it's, the process has been reversed with the pastors a little bit because I don't think their greatest need, why they exist, why they do what they do, is to take the gospel into all the world, but it's just to be localized, right? And and but we're gonna read why the church exists and what Jesus said about it. So there'll be there'll be no misunderstanding. Uh, everything will be clear. There'll be transparency this morning. If you don't understand why the church exists, we're going to take it directly from the horse's mouth. We're going to see what Jesus said, what He commanded for us to do. And I'm going to read in Luke chapter 24, and I'm going to start in verse 46. And He said, Jesus, uh, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and the rise from the dead third day, and that repentance and remission of sin, repentance and remission of sin should be preached. Yes, yes, yes. You see that? Now, that's not to undo other things. Paul said in one place, told Timothy to preach the word, be it in season, out of season. Reprove, right? First. Yep. Rebuke. Yep. And then exhort. Amen. Right? Yep. But what we want to do today, all we want to do is exhort. We want to get people in the church. We want to fill the pews. We want to fill our open plates. We want to... Fill, fill our activities. We want to build, 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 bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. And we want to, we want to make sure that we don't uh, offend nobody. We'll make sure that, that nobody is feelings is hurt. We'll make sure that everybody feels welcome and everybody feels loved. And everybody understands that God loves them. And that in the end, everybody's going to go to heaven if you just do good and do right, right? That's all right. And, and, and so, but he said... And that repentance and remission or forgiveness of sin should be preached in His name among all nations. Yes, yes, yes. Beginning at Jerusalem. Mm. Repentance and remission. Church, that is, this, that is necessary this morning to obtain salvation. I'm not preaching on this, but I just want to make it clear this morning that, that Jesus called His disciples not to build bigger church. He didn't say go and start a church. When people got right and their hearts were got right, the church would come. That's right. But Jesus said to go preach repentance. Go and preach forgiveness of sin in my name. That I'm the only way. I'm the, the, I'm the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. If you preach any other thing, you're preaching another gospel. Right, right. Praise God. <laughs> and the church today has, has refused to preach repentance and remission of sin. Yep. We don't want to tell people, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right, right. We don't want to tell people, listen, the way you're living is, is, is against God, it's oh, against man. His Word, yep. it's against heaven itself. And even they don't realize it, you know, sin is against man. Right. The wages of sin, it's against man. But yet we want to sell them some feel-good story. That's right. We want to tell them that everything is all right. We overlook the situation that we know that God says is not right because we don't want to offend them. Right. And Jesus told them people over there, the Pharisees that done that, that make these proselytes and tickle ear. He said, you made yourself a double foe to hell more than them. What about That's his love, brother. That's good. The church has lost its focus. 
We focus on external things. We focus on what everybody else is doing. You're right. If a church has to go to another church and find out what they're doing about a situation, hey, something is wrong. If a church has to hold a council or a meeting or a board or a, or a, 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 a conference to figure out what the Bible says is right and wrong, something is wrong. And remission. I don't know. I might just preach on this for a while. Go ahead. Oh, no, cut loose, brother. Because if I think there's anything needed in the church today, it's that people realize listen, going to church ain't going to save you. No. Being good ain't going to save you. Being a preacher ain't going to save you. Being a deacon ain't going to save you. Being a musician ain't going to save you. Listen, being good ain't going to save you. Listen, even just believing in God ain't going to save you. That's right. The Bible said the devils believed. Amen. Come on, preacher. But it takes repentance and remission of sin. It takes realizing that you're a sinner and that you can't save yourself. And we're that helpless person, incapable of, of saving ourselves. And we're going to accept what Jesus did. And He forgive us of our sin if we repent and call on Him. And then we can be saved. That's it. And that's not something that's just in our mind. That's something that changes our life. When we truly repent and, and, and we're forgiven, listen, it changes our life. That don't mean we don't make mistakes. Hey, but we don't just keep living like we were living. There's a change take place. When I've seen Donald Trump over the last couple of days, I've seen this incident, this, this event, it was life changing for him. And I don't know his heart. And I'm not saying he's a Christian. I'm not saying he's a man of God. I don't know that. But what I do know is this one event, it has changed his life. That's right. Praise God. And when we meet Jesus Christ and we repent of our sin and we, we accept His forgiveness, it changes our life. We're not who we used to be, but we're who God wants us to be. We're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. And all things have become new. We seek the things of God. We want the things of God. We desire the things of God. We want the fellowship of God and God's people and God's Word. Even though we're in the world, we're not comfortable in the world. Right. Yes, come on. It's needful for us to be here. I brought that out a couple weeks ago. God puts us in these places. Yes. But He didn't put us there to be to be just uh, to be to warm up with the world and to be passive and to be and to be understanding of people living in sin. He put us there to tell people, listen, that there's a way out. And if God can save me, He can save you. Thank you, Jesus. I remember standing in a camp meeting up in uh, Union Hall, Virginia, and, and oh man, boy, I, I, I long for those days. Yeah, man, I long, man, what God has allowed me to come through and 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 just maybe catch the end of it and and more just seeing the power of God and people yeah, God. getting saved and people being healed and I, I remember and, and I was just a young Christian and I, I I was just soaking it in like a sponge and I was too scared to say anything and uh, I remember uh, you know you'd hear one after another stand up and talk about how the, and godly people how that. They had cancer and God had healed them. How God delivered them from this and, and how, how, how they were sick and God touched them and healed them. And, 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 and I got to thinking and I just the Spirit just, just came on me and I just began to weep. And I said, i, I got to tell them something here. And, and I stood up and, and I told them, and I just told them, I said, listen, I, said, I, I had an had a incurable disease and, and that there was no cure and, and, and everybody's attention was looking like... Hey, 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 you know, and, and I, I, I don't know, it might be imagination, but I think the people beside me kind of scooted out just a little bit more. And, and, and I said, no doctor could help me and no, no physician could cure me. And, and 
I said the disease was sin. And, and it, it, was, it was death was the penalty. But thank God Jesus came and He healed me. Amen, preacher. The greatest miracle. Yes. The greatest miracle. God. Repentance and remission. Should be preached in His name, not the church's name, right. not the denomination's name, not not the organization's name, not in 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 a, a, a my name or your name, but in His name, Amen. the name of Jesus. Yes, praise God. But in His name, beginning uh, His name and all nations begin Jerusalem, and He says, "Ye are witnesses of these things." Witnesses. Church, how can we say that God saved us? And 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 we're we're witnesses. We would we, we was there. Somebody said, Well, preacher, how do you truly know you saved? And I just tell them what I heard somebody say one time. I said, I, I was there when it happened. That's right. I was a witness. Yeah. Right? And I remember I couldn't tell enough people fast enough. Yeah. I remember some people was saying praise God and some people didn't believe it and some people say, well, it won't last. Yep. It will. Mm. Witnesses. How, how, can we, how can we talk about such great love? How can God do such a great miracle in our lives and not be a witness to it? That's right. How can we not tell people where our hope comes from? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How do these times that we just we just get complacent and we, we're afraid we don't want to say anything or, or we just you know don't want to offend nobody or, yeah. or, or maybe it is that we don't really know our singles. Mm -hmm. Witnesses. Yes, Lord, yes. Of these things. And behold, I send the promise. Here talking about standing on the promises, right? Yeah. Here's a promise everyone. Hey, I, this happened as sure as I'm standing here this morning. This is this, this promise was fulfilled. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power, huh? Until you be endued with power, not 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 from uh, from Duke power, not from Rutherford, not not from the people, but not not even from the church, but until you be endued with power from on high. Tarry. Well, we we just we're a society that don't like to wait on nothing, do we? You're right. We get so aggravated and frustrated standing in line, and and when people slow us down, man, when we we're ready to go somewhere, we're ready to get something. We want it, and we want it right then. Yes, it's good. Come on, preacher. And we just laying down on that horn and just you know just saying, giving people the you know universal. Peace sign and everything else. Get moved out of the way. Now I'm in a hurry. Yeah. You're right. Don't want to wait on nothing. Just go, go, go. We're in such a hurry. We've, we've run off and left God. How sad. Bless his rule. Hurry up and get to church so we can hurry up and get out. You're right, preacher. That's so sad. Bless huh? Now I'm going to go back and let me read Acts chapter 1 and do the power from on high. And do the power from on high. Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And he said unto them, again, this is Jesus' words, it is not for you to know the time to ask Jesus. When everybody wants to know when, if we just knew when Jesus was coming back, we could be ready. We could be getting our lives in order right. We could be doing things good. We could be, we could be, we we we'd be busy, busy, busy. Wait. No, we wouldn't. If we knew exactly when the Lord was coming back, wouldn't none of us be in church today? You're right. Well, he ain't coming back till you know three more years. I'm, I'm yeah. gone. I'm gone. That, that's Jesus. Tell us when you're coming back. Right? That'd be good to know, wouldn't it? A lot of people think they know. I huh? I mean, they've even... People has given, lost their lives. People has sold everything they have yep. when some nut job oh, said the world was going to end. Yep. Now, I didn't get saved until 1991 and 1989, I believe it was. You know, that, that, that quack out in California predicted the world was going to end, right? 
And man, that scared me to death. I know better, but it scared me. Yeah. Scared me to death. And, and, and I read the articles that people out in California, wealthy, rich people, are selling everything that they have. And getting their money, taking their money out of the banks. Well, that's pretty stupid to begin with. Well, yeah. But the world ends, what good's any of that going to do you? But you see, I heard Brother Chris's message more talking about Abraham. Now, he was a, a, not only an idol worshiper uh, at one time, but he was an idol maker. And he sold these idols and, and made money off of them. And, 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 and it, we don't do things like that today, but church, we become just as complacent. You're right. right? Just as complacent. We've sold out for a whole lot less. Yes. I mean, think about it. Well, the Bible says, listen, don't grow weary. Hey, God's not slack concerning His promise. No. Hey, hey, this promise right here was fulfilled. And I promise you, the, 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 the other one's going to be fulfilled. One day, the, the trumpet is going to sound and, and Christ is going to uh, shout and the dead in Christ is going to rise and we which are alive and remain who believe, who've been saved, who've been born again, who's repented of our sins are going to uh, be caught up together with Him to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a promise. Yep. Hmm? But let's, let, let's hurry up. I want to get, get these points real quick. He said, um, they asked him the question, but Jesus responded and said, it is not for you to know the time to receive. Don't worry about that. Right. Why are we so worried about that? Why do people worry about the end of the world if you're saved anyway, right? right yeah. I said if you're not saved, I was worried when I wasn't saved. Yep. Yeah. It's not for you to know time and seasons which the Father had put in His own power. Jesus didn't even know either. That's right. But you shall... Here's your promise. You shall what, receive power Amen. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses again unto me in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God. Let's go to chapter 2. I wasn't going to read that, but I am. Chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yep. Just like Jesus had said, right? Let me tell you something, church. If His Word said it, we better do it. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. We can't negate it. Nope. We can't compromise it. Oh, we can say, well, that's not what he really meant, or that's not what, what he really said, or, or no, he, he didn't mean exactly all of us, right? But in order to receive the promises of God, we, we got to do exactly what God tells us to do. I promise you, if, if somebody told you that, 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 you know, that there's a safe over there, and, and I'm going to give you the combination. But there's a catch. If you don't do, put the combination in exactly just like I tell you, you'll hit the wrong number and that thing will blow up. I promise you, you're going to want to know. You're, you're going to play that over. Or you're going to yeah. study that. You're going you're to read about it. You're going to write it down. And you're going to want to make sure that you do exactly what the man told you to do. Oh That's good. That's huh? Good. You're not just going to go, yeah, okay. Yeah. Bam! Bam! <laughs> And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house that, that where they, they were sitting, and there appeared to them flowing tongues like in the fire as sat upon each man, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others and there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men of every nation under heaven. That's the power of God. It came. And, and we only speak of it now as if it needs to come again. It's still here. But, but there, there's a problem. We've not come to the point where we can receive it. 
right. We don't really believe that God meant what He said. Yeah. He said. We, we, we think this is for a dispensation somewhere way back there in ancient times. You're right. But church, the Holy Ghost is still here. That's yeah. right. And He'll fill our hearts individually. And when you receive Christ, and when you repent, and when you receive forgiveness, the Holy Spirit comes in. But listen, we need to move beyond that. We need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need to, God to just, uh, just give us the power of the Holy Spirit. And He'll do that individually. But church, if we're not in one accord and in unity, the power of God will never come on the church like That's it did right here. You're right, preacher. Well, preacher, I've got the Holy Ghost, but don't you want everybody to have the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Don't you want to see the church have power? Yeah. Don't you want to don't 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 you want to witness why why we exist? It's more about just coming and sitting here and, and hearing me preach and hearing people sing and hearing people play and hearing people pray. It goes deeper than that. Bradley and I was talking this morning. Hey, we come here to get empowered because in just a little bit we're going out into a world where the enemy is and he's going to attack all of us. And there's people out there that need to be saved. We need strength, not to be overtaken by the world, but that we end the world and taking Jesus to them. Yep. My God, my God. Yes, it is. <clears throat> but it came. Right? Alright, let me go here to four real quick. Where did I read the chapter four at? 4, 32 and 33. Y'all can just stay where you at. 13 and 13. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither yeah. said any of them off their possessions which they had was their own, but they had all things in common. And here it is, with great power. Mm -hmm. And with great power yeah. gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Thank God. With great power. Church, revival is only going to come when we receive the power of God. Without the power of God, it's not going to come. If, if, if we want to be the church, listen, people, we, we have built churches, we have, we have sent missionaries, we have, we have trotted foreign lands, we have educated people, we have brought people in with talent and, and people with an intellect and, and we've, we've done all of these things and, and yet look at the church today and, and it's bigger than it's ever been, more members than it's ever had, but the problem is, is the church has no power. Hmm? No power. We... we People say, well, I know there's claims of these other churches, but church, that, that's... Let me tell you something real quick without getting off uh, track. Whatever God has, I promise you Satan's got a good counterfeit. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is the father of imitation. Yes, he is. I mean, it's all through the Bible. When Moses stood off of Pharaoh, the old devil there, and God said, Moses, I, I'm going to make you going to do things you ain't never known you can do. Yeah. And all these wonders and miracles. Hey, and buddy, they had people and magicians over there, and they, they duplicated everything that they done. But you know what? God always went up to them. Yeah. My favorite one is when he throws his staff down, it became a snake. And they throw the stick down, it became a snake. And God's snake just raised up and just devoured yeah. that snake. Yeah. I can just see old God pointing his finger at the devil. Devil, you've got power, but you ain't got that kind of power. <laughs> huh? And you know what? I think the devil is pointing the finger at the church and said, oh, you've got power, but you ain't got that kind of power. Yep, I said. And we've just accepted it. We quit believing 
We, 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 we quit, we, we quit uh, seeking and we quit hungering and we quit, thir- oh, we just go get a, get a little fix on Sunday and, and we'll be good to go and just go about it and just get, get, get you know, just go about our ways and, 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 and do what we want to do and, and not worry about it. And, and, and the worst thing that we can think anyway, and, and, and though it may seem true, is, well, the world ain't going to never change. You know why the world ain't going to change? Because the church won't change. And I'm going to prove that to you. And I'm not even going to have to. I'm going to prove that to you right now. We're going to go home. I'm not even going to preach the rest of my sermon. The biggest lie that Satan has sold the church is, well, you ain't going to change the world. Of course not. Because the church won't change. We're just going about our same old routine, same old thing, single over here, preaching a little there. Let's just go on and go right back out and be ourselves and do what we want to do, right? The only place we can worship God is in church. The only place we give a testimony is in church. The only place that we say anything is in church. The world won't change because the church won't change. If the church would change, let me show you what they'll do. And, and, and I hope I brought enough without giving my points. We'll preach this again next week. I don't care. Oh, yeah. You know me, I'll, I'll get on something. I'll hammer till the nails flood. Amen. Right? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't leave a little, the head sticking out where you catch your toe on it. You know, ain't nothing worth, our deck, I'm going to have to replace our deck. That thing, you know, it pushes nails up. Be aware. But ain't nothing worth walking across that thing barefoot and catch your toe on one of them nails. <laughs> I'm going I'm to drive it for you. But look in Acts chapter 17. I'm going to just go start at verse 1. And y'all go back and read, read the rest of the story. Now when they had passed through Amphilus and Apollonia, they came to Thessalon- Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul as his manner was, went into them. I love Paul. Paul never missed an opportunity. Paul didn't miss a, he didn't miss an open door. But it said, as the manner of Paul. Hey, in other words, this, this wasn't unusual for Paul to do. That's right. I wish I could think of that saint's name because that reminded me of that. What, what the light of all. Oh, God. But anyways, they said, Sister Leslie told me, he said, it wasn't nothing for him. He'd, he'd just go from one place to the next preaching to God. He said, you might, you might be in your bed sleeping. And he'll come in your house 3 o'clock in the morning, take a bath, you'll hear him singing and praising God at the top of his voice. They, they know that's the way he was. As the manner of so many. What, 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 what would people say your manner was? Well, old Larry, I... He done that after, he, after his manner. That's what we see him do all the time. But look, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Why are we trying to use modern day philosophy? Huh? I've said this for so many years. People have been sold the intellectual lie. Do you know why persecute, Rome had persecuted more Christian people than anybody in history? The Roman church now. And that's another sermon. Do you know why they done that? Because they didn't want people to know the truth. Read the history. Didn't want people to know the truth. William Kendall, who brought the first translation of the Bible, hey, he realized that, man, anybody can understand this. Yes, yes. Why are they keeping it from us? Because they could govern you. They could rule you. They could control you. You're not smart enough to interpret the Word of God. We have to do it for you. And church, we've gone right back, that, right back to that day. Yep. These intellectual modern day preachers think they're so smart and so sophisticated and so educated with their degrees and their theologies and their certificates. Now, they're, they're saying, look, hey, you don't, i got to tell you what God means because you can't understand it, you see. That's right. 
And we just buy into it. Mm -hmm. And not only that, going back to my thought, they'll tell you, matter of fact, you just don't even, we, we got to write a book that'll You're help right. you understand the Bible. And yep. you read my book, I'll give to you for no charge. Anybody wants you can have it. You just paid a $39.99 shipping and handling. Yep. Absolutely yours, Fred, right? Then not all. Not all. But said Paul reasoned with them not through Joel Osteen's every day's a Friday or be a better you. Yeah. Not Kenneth Copeland, not not none of these other, but yeah. he said through the scripture. Yeah. Through the scripture. You'll never get nobody saved until you reason. With them with the scriptures. That's exactly right. Not what you think, not what you've been no. told, not what you heard, but with the scriptures, the word of God. Now look here. I'm going to close. Reason with them out of the scriptures, right? Yes. Opening and alleging that Christ must need to have suffered and rise again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believe. Now, now look here. Look at this next passage. Well, it, wouldn't it have been awful what the Scripture said when Paul preached that? And knowing. I, I'm glad it said, and some of them believe. Church, not everybody's going to believe. That's right. But we don't stop trying. Not everybody's going to believe. If Paul would have come out of there and said, oh yeah, you know, they, you know, they, they all believed. Knowing good and well that they didn't. No one good what he did. Be in the city. But it says, and some believed. And some believed in consorting with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greek, a great multitude, praise God, and of the chief women, not a few, but the Jews which believed not. The very people that the gospel was brought to. And church, we just turn right around and we're just like the Jews of old. God had brought us in other people uh, or th that I must bring also, which is the Gentile people. Yep. Other sheep I have because of Jews' rejection of Christ, He turned to the, to the Gentiles right. and Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and, and people began to get saved and revivals took place and people began to believe. And now all these uh, uh, years later, here we are again, we've just turned right back around But the Jews which believe not moved with envy. Took unto them certain lewd fellow, fellows of the baser sword and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. Now this ain't my, this ain't my message, but I want you to just think about that for a minute. We, uh, we say we're Christians. We say we believe. We say we're true. You know, what, if, what if an army would come through them doors right now? Mm. That's what they did. Yep. I still believe, and not in the manners they did here, but see, Satan has gotten so crafty. Satan don't have to persecute us per se. Satan don't have to send in the fire squad. Satan don't have to jerk us out of our churches today, you know, because we, he don't. No, Satan said, hey, I got them. I don't even got to go there. Hey, I got them. They're inside, man. They're all being deceived. They don't stand up for what's right. They, they, they compromise sin. They, they just tell people, do the best you can. They tell people that they're all right when they know good and well they're not. Yep, that's it. Huh? Hey, man, they're doing my work for me. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Leave them alone. Yeah. Scrubbing bubbles. Yeah. They do the work so I don't have to. Praise God. Now look here. I promise we're closing. Uh, but are the Jews which believe not, no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard I preach, no matter how many times I preach, I realize that everybody ain't going to believe. Right? And that's sad. That breaks my... Look, when we, when we know somebody that, that leaves this world that's not a Christian, we, it ought to break our heart. Yeah. 
Yeah. It ought to burden me. My yeah. mama, the day before she passed away, I looked at her and I said, Mama, are you saved? She said, Son, I'm saved. Mm-hmm. And she knew why I was asking. Not that I didn't think she wasn't, but I wanted to validate that because I know Mama's time was short. She just smiled and she says, Son, I'm saved. I said, Mama, I know you are. I know you are. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to hear it, right? But look here. But if the Jews which believe not, move with envy. Don't, listen, when we stand for what's right, we're going to be. You, you can't get along with the world. Don't expect to. They're not going to love you. They're not. Hey, if you're liked by the world, you need to get right with God. That's right, preacher. I don't care how influential those people are. I don't care how rich they are. I don't care what their status is. If you're rubbing elbows with them and they think you're a great person, they're bragging on you, know, and they're and, and they're they're not saved, and they don't. Hey, something's wrong. Yes, that's right. That's fact. Because they're gonna hate us. I'm not saying go out here and beat people up and start a riot and a picket and march up and down the streets telling everybody that all this is going on is wrong. But I'm saying when you stand for the Word of God and proclaim His holy Word, you're going to be persecuted. It's in the workplaces now. Can't say certain things. We ain't got a guy at work there. They had a Trump hat on. HR went and told me you can't wear that here at work. How much freedom do we actually have in America? Huh? That, that might offend somebody. <laughs> Honest to goodness, it happened. And we're a free country. Yeah. Free, free to do what? That's right. I As I said many, many times, I, I love America, but I do not love what America's become. No, that's right. Now, what I say, as I read these last scriptures, what I say, they was sold the church to lie you can't change the world. Well, he's right, because the church won't change. The reason we're not changing the world is because the church won't change their ways. The church. I'm not going to blame the world. The world ain't never changed. It's been that way since man fell in the garden. Don't expect it to be good. The world is full of sin. The world is full of sinners. But it's the church. Yep. The church should direct the way the world's going, not the world the way the church is going. That's right. Now, how do you know that, preacher? Well, look here in verse 5. But, but the Jews which believed not moved with them and took unto them certain lewd fellows and base of sword and gathered uh, the city in uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring the people out of the people. And when they found them not, they drew out Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers. Now listen to what they said of the city crying, these are the, these that have turned the world upside down. That's power. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Turn the world upside down. You see, when when the church was right, the world was right. Hey, when the church uh, trusted God and the church was in new with power, it affected the world. Mm -hmm. Turn the world upside down. My God, my God, my God. Hmm. And yet, we let the devil tell us we can't change the world. Well, we'll never change. Start making change in the world till we begin to change the church. And I'm sad to say, and y'all know when I say church, I'm not talking about South River. I'm talking about church, yeah. the church, yeah. the church. And and the church today is not this church. No. Nope. That turned the world upside down. The church today has allowed the world to come in and turn the church upside down. Amen. But Jesus said, You shall be endued with power. Yes. With the power of God we can overcome. With the power of God we can change. With the power of God we can we can see miracles. With the power of God and the scriptures, we can see people getting saved, right? Yep.
I, I would rather see one person, and God God will do it all, but just listen to what I'm saying. I'd rather see one sinner get saved than ten righteous people healed. Yep. Now, not that I won't pray for people, not that I don't believe for it, but if I was into bounces, I'd rather see one person be converted to Christ Me too, than ten people yes. healed that already know Him. Right? And I pray for God's people. That's part of the power that He gives us. Yes. We can be healed. Yes. But I'm saying, let's put it in real perspective. What? So You know what? Sometimes we, we just pray so much for ourselves, we forget all about the lost. We're just so concerned about what we won't need. That that 89% of the of the church members that was was polled, all we care about is, is me, myself, and I and my family. That's what you need to do, and don't worry about nothing else. No, that's not what Jesus told us to do. Not what Jesus told you. Power. Until you be endued with power. Church, the Holy Ghost has come. We can receive that power collectively. Yep. And that's what we should be praying for. Yes. I'm not saying we don't have the power individually. But I'm saying until we, we get that power collectively, we're not going to make a difference in our community, in our city, in our state, or in the world until we're in with that power from on high. He promises that. Are you standing on that promise? Jesus said you will be in with power. But we got to get to where we can receive it mm-hmm. as a body of Christ. And next week we'll preach on again because I'm going to show you what that power does. I'm going to give you evidence of that power yeah, yeah. in a church's life. Yeah. And we can weigh it out for ourselves. Everybody stand to your feet. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Won't have no music this morning. I just want everybody just take a minute. Why do we exist as the body of Christ? Let's break that down even further. God, why, why do I exist as part of the church? What is my mission? What is it you call me to do, God? Lord, am I committed to that? Lord, am I sold out for that? God, God have I put that above everything else, Lord? Lord, Speak to us today. And God, not, not only to me and individuals, God, but let us realize in order for the church to make a difference, yes. we've got to have power. God, if, if we've if we're got many divisions among us, God, if we're not all on the same page, if we're not all on board, if we're not all of one heart and one mind, one spirit, God, Lord, we can't, we can't utilize the power of no, God no, like that. No good. We can't utilize the power. God, we got to get the where we put everything else aside and God focus. That church in Acts, they had all things in common, yep. but in the center of that was Jesus Christ. Yep. Amen. He has to be centered. So God, I pray that you bless everybody here today. God, let us let us pray, let us tarry until we receive. That power from on high. Yes. Amen. And Father, it'll be manifested through the work that you do right here. And we'll speak about that next week, Lord's willing. God, I pray that you'd be with the family today as they go, Lord, uh, um, in, the, in the life celebration. God, just, just give them courage. Yes. God, give them boldness. Father, give them comfort. Not only these, but all. Lord, the funeral homes are, are filled this morning. Father, with people that left this world. That, that ought to be our concern as well, God. Lord, we, we need to do our best to rescue the perishing, God. Lord, so many people every day. Lord, we're not promised tomorrow, God. This, this might be the last time this church hears me speak. I don't know. And God, I hope it's not. God, I, I, I don't want to die. But God, one thing I know is I'm ready to die. Amen. Lord, I, I know without a doubt in my heart, Lord, that if I then no, nobody needs to come pray over me. No. Don't waste no time doing that. Go, go, go to the law. Thank God. Amen. God, I know that my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. Lord, I've I've repented and I've received oh, remission, God. Yes. And I know that I hey, that's the greatest thing that I can have today. Lord, is that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in my heart and my life. 
God, let us, let us all be thankful for that today. Oh. Lord, and, and just comfort the family and lift them up, God. Oh, Lord, oh, the, the children, God, my heart's heavy for them, Father, this morning. Oh, Lord, just bless them. And Lord, I, I pray, pray for Kristen. That, Lord, if she has to... Uh, uh, go through this, God, with her children and the loss of her husband. God, that you just you just strengthen her and comfort her, God. Lord, just speak to them in whatever way they all need to be spoken to today, God. And Lord, let them look to you this morning, Father. Lord, I pray that you just keep everybody safe under the sound of my voice today. God, it was truly good to be here this oh, morning, God. Yes. And Lord, I take credit for none of it. Thank Not you, none of it this morning, God. But Lord, I believe I've I've obeyed. Yes, I believe yes. I've delivered. Uh, Lord, what you'd have me deliver this morning, God. And Lord, I believe it's there for us to, to accept and to receive that yep. promise of God. And we thank you and praise you for it all in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen.